the criminals causing everyone and yourself so much pain, or do you feel hatred and resentful of the guards for doing it with stuff? Do I feel hateful and resentful? I went through a period of resentment and anger after I was arrested. And then I, try, I was trying to use the whole thing as an educational experience. I read about a thousand books while I was inside, a lot of philosophy and psychology. And from reading all that stuff, hate and resentment, all it is is you punishing yourself, basically. Because the people who have done these things to you, they don't know you're hating and resenting on them. And you're releasing all these negative chemicals into your body, your brain is, and it can reduce your lifespan even, you're stressing yourself out with all these unhealthy uh, hormones. So it's like, why even bother doing that? I tried to become a person who, I, I took up yoga, and meditation, and you know, it was like I had to go through this whole situation to grow up as a person. It sent my life in this whole new positive direction. And I don't begrudge it at all now, I see it as my destiny that I had to go through it to get to where I am today. And I'm perfectly happy with the direction my life is going in. And it was even the hardest moment for me, living with the cockroaches and just getting so stressed out, I was contemplating just slashing my wrists and killing myself. It was like I was on the edge of madness, but being there and coming away from it, it's, it's strengthened me now mentally for the rest of my life. So I'm grateful for it. I don't resent it or hate it. The system or any of the people on either side, the guards or the prisoners, and a lot of the prisoners, you know, are my good friends to this day. All right, it's in my DNA. The first thing I do when I go home is I check how the stock market is doing. Um, I like to do my own research, and that takes hours and hours and hours. So when I've got money in the future, I would probably go back to stock trading with my own money. I'm not allowed legally to be a stockbroker because I've got a criminal record. But I'll go back to trading probably my own money. Right now, I'm just so busy with everything that's going on. I don't have time to put the research in. I wasn't reading to do anything like maximum to do anything except for the spies and cockroaches. All right, the medium security jail um, was, it's more people living together. The highest security you get, oh, it's like two man cells. Medium prison, they did actually allow you out for some recreation time. Medium jail, they didn't. But in maximum, you very rarely get out of your cell. And super maximum, you never get out at all. In super maximum, there's a trap on your door. Armed guards in full battle gear come, shank proof armor, come and feed you through a trap in the door. If you want to take a shower, you've got to back up to the door, put your hands to it, and they will handcuff you. And then they'll, the door will slide open, and the, uh, these armed guards will escort you to the shower. And you've got to do the same, back out, Hang, on hand coffee and you can take a shower and you, they can leave you stuck in the shower for hours and hours on end as well before they'll come back and let you out so it gets really intense the higher up you go security classification also you can supplement your diet with certain things you can buy from the inmate store if you're in minimum that list is long if you're in supermax that list is tiny they will not let you buy many things at all because everything's weaponized Well, that's the thing you never know. You know, you've got these gang members wearing murder <coughs> as tattoos and they're proud of it and they're showing off. But on the other hand, like, you know who they are. On the other hand, I had a cellmate in Super Maximum. He just looked like a normal, nerdy kind of IT guy. He was very quiet, very reserved, very polite, never really spoke much to anyone. And we see him, I see him go past and getting escorted to the shower in Super Max. And he wouldn't even really look over anything. Um, just kept himself to himself. And then one day, he went to medical, and I just we all just thought, you know, he's probably not in for much. Everyone started yelling, what's this guy in for? What's this guy in for? And his cellmate said, I don't know. And they all started yelling, well, check through his legal paperwork. And they went through his legal paperwork, and he was a serial killer. So you just don't know who people are. You know, if someone could be as dangerous and doesn't lock it, someone could look dangerous and be dangerous, and you know it. But Okay. <laughs> yes, everybody has nicknames. As soon as you go in, they give you a nickname. My nickname was England. A lot of people, it would be like their hometown and stuff like that. So they call me England. And again, I was glad they did that because it was a talking point. The gang members would come and say, you need to go to the white boy meeting. 
And I'd be like, no I don't, I'm the head of my own gang, the English, <laughs> and stuff like that, and clown them, go on. That's the thing as well, um, that justice system in Arizona, once they've got you, and I, I take full responsibility for putting myself in there, let's be clear, I was, I was guilty, but there's a lot of people in there that you just never know. The prosecutors, they're arresting a lot of people. Um, once you're in there, you must sign a plea bargain. 98% of the cases go to plea bargains, they don't go to trials and admit your guilt. If you go to trial, they'll make a headline sentence out of you. This is responding to that question again earlier. You get your charges stacked up. There was an abortion doctor in there, and it appeared he may have